Hello, my name is Lauren Sandler and I'm the Learning Specialist at the UF Teaching Center. In this video session, we'll be going over ways that you can fight procrastination. So first, let's start off by thinking about what are the reasons that we do procrastinate? Well, it could be that there's just not enough time left. It could be that there's too many distractions around you or that the instructions are unclear and you're not sure where to start. Maybe there's just too much to do and you don't know where to start or that you're just tired and you don't want to start. So think about all the reasons why you procrastinate as I go through this presentation. And w as I go through it, think about ways that you can combat your specific reason with the resources I'm presenting. So next, let's find out where you're spending most of your time. It can be in one of four of these quadrants. The first quadrant is our activities that are urgent and important. These are things such as crises, deadlines, and meetings, things that need to be taken care of right away and that they're very important to your success. Our next quadrant are things that are not urgent, but they are important. Things like these, such as planning and empowerment, creative strategies to help you succeed. By spending time in this section, though it's not urgent, it can help you succeed overall. And then on our third quadrant, we have activities that are urgent but not important. Things such as emails and interruptions, um, some meetings that are not planned, and even projects that are ongoing but don't really have a, de a deadline. Keeping these things in mind, you, every time that you're interrupted, you lose your focus. So things in quadrant three can be very distracting. And then next, in quadrant four, we have things that are not urgent and not important things that help you lose your focus really fast and really help you to procrastinate. Things such as focusing on trivial matters when you should be focusing on important things, such as doing your laundry. Um, things like that distract you from your homework, so make sure that you set aside time to do these trivial matters separately from your homework and your study time. Wasting time on Facebook or escaping in television shows, so try to spend as little time in this section as possible when you should be doing other things. So where do you think you should spend the majority of your time? Some people will say section one, and that is a legitimate argument. But actually, if you spend a lot of your time in section two, you won't be um, having to avert all of these crises and dealing with these deadlines if you plan ahead and you use good time management skills. So if you're able to create a plan, spend a lot of time doing it in quadrant two, and that way you'll be more prepared for the crises and the meetings that happen in quadrant one. So now that we've evaluated where we spend a lot of our time, let's talk about where we find our motivation. Is it internally or is it externally? Internal reinforcement um, happens when you find the motivation within yourself. So it could be that you're really interested in the class, or maybe you're really determined to pass this class so you can move on with your other coursework. Or maybe you'll just make yourself feel really guilty if you're not, if you're not studying properly. So by finding these internal reinforcements, you're able to study more efficiently and effectively. On the other hand, if you're not able to find that internal reinforcement, try to find ways that externally reinforce your studying. This could be with a study group or with a study buddy. Divide the tasks and responsibilities into smaller sections, and that way you don't have to do the whole thing yourself, and your people are relying on you, so it holds you accountable. Also, you can schedule a weekly meeting with your professor or TA just to catch up and make sure that you are on task, and that you have all the information you need to complete the assignments. So once you find where your reinforcement and your motivation is coming from, check out some of these tips. The first one can be to set yourself a short time limit. If you have a large project looming over you and you just can't seem to get yourself started, set yourself this time limit of 10 minutes. Just sit down and promise yourself it's all going to be over after 10 minutes. Just get started. And maybe when you get started you might find that it's a lot easier than you thought it was and you might find that you finish or you get a lot more done than you thought you would. The next we have is to divide larger tasks into smaller ones and set mini due dates for yourself. Let's say you have a 20 page paper due. Divide it up into sections and do it a little bit each day up until the due date and then use the final day to review all of that you wrote and to revise it. Also, don't wait for perfection. You'll never have all the material you need, you'll never have perfect silence, and you'll never be perfectly ready mentally to write a long paper or to study for a really hard exam. So just sit down and do it whenever you can. And if it isn't perfect, that's okay. You can go back and perfect it later. 
And also, when you're, tr when you're procrastinating, a lot of times it's easy to push the harder tasks off to the end and do the easier tasks first because it's more rewarding to check these easy tasks off our list and we say, look how much we've got accomplished. But instead, try doing the worst task first. Study the hardest material first and that way it's over and out of the way with and you can spend the majority of your time on the easier things and that are more rewarding. So by finishing the worst first, you can move on to the easy stuff and end on a good note. We also have that you should set realistic goals for yourself. Can you really write this 20 page paper in one sitting the night before it's due? Most people can't and that's okay. So make sure that your realistic goals are actually achievable. And if they're not, you should reevaluate them and try to make them more appropriate for the situation that you have on hand. Also, find ways to reward yourself. You can't study 24-7. I mean, some people can, but try to find time for activities that you enjoy. If you like going to the gym or enjoy taking a fitness class, make sure that you leave time for those activities that you like, so that way you aren't feeling like you're missing out on things when you're studying. You'll also feel more refreshed when you sit down to focus on your material. And also, be specific when you're studying. Saying, I'm going to study, is not the same as saying, I'm going to review my notes, my text, and my, the PowerPoint slides for Chemistry Chapter 5. Being very specific in your study plan helps you not procrastinate because you know exactly what you're going to do. And then, as I said before, join a study group or get a study buddy who's on the same serious, ne serious level as you. You don't want a study buddy who's goofing around when you're ready to get down to the grind. The UF Teaching Center also has a variety of resources to help you succeed during your time here at UF. You can set up an individual study skills appointment, you can check out our video resources page on a variety of topics, or you can come in for our walk-in and private tutoring absolutely free. We look forward to seeing you soon and good luck! The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.